I always talk about myself a lot because I always have problems. But, um, and just issues that happen all the time, this anger mainly, and one, you know, you know, the enemy tries to get me mad and then tries to get me so mad that I just want to say, screw it, go use, you know? Because that's where it ends up going every oh. time almost, you know? And um, so, but anyways, uh, um, I was going to talk a little, we're gonna, I think what we're going to do, like, starting next week is, um, I've been praying about it, is that we're just going to get in um, one of the books, I believe in the New Testament, and just go through it, you know, and kind of just really go through it and just, you know, and I'm still praying about it, we'll see, but um, I'm just going to read, you know, some in Psalms about David today, because <clears throat> David was a man who was really close to the Lord, you know, I mean, he had a heart after God, you know, God said he was a man after his own heart, and God um, and David had a special relationship, you know, David was a sheep herder, or, you know, gatherer, or sheep herder, or, you know, and uh, just a little scrawny guy, but I mean, he was tough, you know, and uh, he was a fearless, fearless man, you know, even as a kid, and, um, you know, it was because he had the power of God with him, you know, he had God on his side, you know, and uh, he worshiped God as just a young kid on up, you know, and um, <clears throat> his, um, in Psalm 37, I don't know if you guys, if anybody else needs a Bible, if there's a, um, right there, there's a whole herd of them in that thing right there, that's what I forgot, I'll work out the key slowly. <laughs> No, I apologize for the small writing and the little Bibles. Man, they're hard to see. Uh, um, but anyway, so um, Psalms 37. Um, you know, really just getting to know God and walking, you know, His path. You know, once we become saved and once we give our lives over to Jesus Christ, you know, we are born again. You know, but once from that point on, you know, we really, we got to be like David, we got to get to know God, especially a lot of us here that I know, and me especially, with the battles and struggles we have, from all the stuff we used to do, that the enemy wants to push our buttons and bring back, you know, it's um, something that we got to do more than ever, is get to know Christ, and just, I mean, feast on Him. You know, and that's what it talks about. I mean, I love Psalm 37. So, um, in um, verse 3, it says, um, there's so many different things it talks about this, you know, but it all results to the same thing. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. I just, I love that, you know, I mean... Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. You know, the Lord is so faithful to all of us. Everyone here has a, has a past and a very, I'm sure, crazy life that we have lived, at least at one point, you know? And I'm sure more than one of us have had experiences to where we should have been dead and already gone. Either locked up, dead, left for dead, in hell, over with. But God is faithful. Just like it's saying right here, you know, and uh, I mean, he is so faithful. I mean, I think it's about the times of my life, um, most of you know, you know, I mean, I, I've had four or five overdoses, you know, three, four of them I ended up in the hospital, you know, uh, three major car wrecks. I mean, I should have been gone long ago, you know, but um, God is faithful, you know, through all my backslides, you know, even after I got saved seven years ago, my backslides, you know. Um, I still had an overdose after I became a Christian, you know, three years later when I had backslide off of um, uh, painkillers from uh, injuries. And, uh, you know, the Lord just is so faithful. You think, oh, no, I'm done at this time. I'm out of His grace. You know, it's over. But He is always there. Because we're the ones that end up getting distracted with life, you know. Um, I get, you know, right now with doing my, the stucco business that I got, 
it's so easy to get distracted and caught up, you know, and I can only imagine, you know, even with work or whatever it is, just to get caught up when you go outside the doors of just the normal day life. As soon as you hit on the road, someone cuts you off, this, that, whatever it is, I mean, life just happens, life just begins, you know, and it's just the way it goes. Life's a struggle, you know, I mean, we run into a lot of issues, you know, there's people that we want to bash their teeth in, you know, that come, we come across. I mean, there's a lot of problems I struggle with with anger that I just, I got to try to give it up to the Lord because I get so mad sometimes with, um, especially dealing with stuff going with contractors, you know, and employees and like doing things that I, you know, um, want to have my friends back when stuff happens and I just want to end up, you know, going over and just telling this dude what I think of him and just knocking him out, you know, and it's like, you know, no, oh, you know, that was the old me. The enemy tries to bring that out of us, you know? And if we're doing, if we're reading the Word, and we're getting to know the Lord, like we've been talking about this summer, how uh, we've been going about, like when we, um, the one verse I brought up probably the most is that Hebrews 4, 15, verse 16. It was whatever the one day I was trying to think of it, I couldn't remember it for some reason, and it's tattooed on the side of my hand. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so as you know, um, in that verse, you know, it talks about, you know, someone that we can go to, Jesus Christ. You know, we have a high priest who has been through and tested every single thing that we have been went through or been through. So we have someone who understands what we're going through. So it says when we're going through that thing at that exact moment when we're struggling, go to him. You know what I mean? Drop what you're doing, whatever you're doing, and you go to him. It says boldly before the throne of grace. And you ask for mercy in your time of need, mercy and grace, and the Lord will help you. You know, Christ is there for us. He has, He sympathizes with us because He was up here on the earth. He was tempted by Satan, you know, and He went through. And He also, all of His good friends, the ones that He cared about, and so many people that He cared about and healed and went through, and His heart just broke for all these people, you know. I mean, He loves us, guys. I mean, you know, I mean, obviously he does. I mean, look what he went through through us. You know, to the point of subjecting himself to just the utter mockery and embarrassment of people spitting on him, beating him, torturing him, and nailing him to the cross, making fun of him, come down, you know what I mean? And he was doing it for, you know, and he, what do you say, Father, forgive them, even the guy's doing it to him. And, uh, you know, I mean, he loves us. As rich as love can get, that is what love comes from, is from Jesus Christ, you know? I mean, it's pure, you know? So we know if he would do that for us, if he would go through all that for us, and even for the people, you know, he knew that there was going to be several people that still reject him and spit on him, but he didn't care. There could have been one person on the face of this earth, you know, that accepted him, that he knew of, that would have accepted him. 1979, some guy that would have accepted him, just one guy, he would have still did it. That's how deep his love is, you know? And um, we want to get in on that love with him, you know? We want to, like it says right here, feasting, feed on his faithfulness. Because he is so faithful to us, you know? So, I mean, we can go before the Lord. We don't have to worry about him turning on our, his back on us. We don't have to worry about... You know, even the simplest situations, you know, that we got with um, little things that we think are kind of like minute, that I'm not bothering God with this, I'm just going to handle it myself. Those times, those things that I found out to be sometimes like end up turning into being big situations in our lives that cause problems to where when we just even give up the small things to God, I mean, that's how it starts. You know, it's like lifting weights, you start small and you work your way up, you know. And I like to think the same as in prayer, you know, like getting to know him. We start small, you know, five minutes in the morning, five minutes at lunch, maybe five minutes at night. And then start, you know, doing ten minutes in the morning, ten minutes at night or whatever. And you just start building on that, you know, and just start thinking of people you can pray about and then just start getting to know them, you know. Just as I'm talking to you guys, that's how I talk to God. I walk around in my room outside and I don't, my neighbors, they're like, like perch over us in their big huge house and like I would like hey, just outside sometimes just walking and just talking, you know what I mean? And they just probably think I'm a psycho, you know what I mean? I'm sure they do. But uh because <clears throat> the guy put up a fence boring our grass. Like but um, um 
it's this, you know, we got to get to know him, you know, and um, I love this. I mean, David is this, you know, if anybody that we should listen to on how to get to know the Lord, it's David. He knew God. I mean, he went up against Goliath, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like, it's just crazy. That whole story blows my mind, you know what I mean? Just to have the faith to do that, to know God that well, to see this huge giant that every man that's bigger than you, and you're a little teenager, you know what I mean? And go up and just, oh, don't worry about God. I need another armor, nice guy. Then you got a couple rocks. You know what I mean? It was crazy. He had, he had that much faith, you know? And, um, you know, he said, delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Now that's, you know, you know the desires of our heart. He's not saying, you know, oh, you know what? I want this um, awesome new 350 truck and this and that. You know, I mean, all this stuff. But, you know, the Lord <coughs> um, looks out for us as well when we become his, you know? And the desires of our heart, you know, that I believe that he's talking about here are <coughs> the stuff that we truly deep down inside need and that we struggle with, whether it's certain addictions and struggles, um, you know, whether it's just paying the bills, whether it's doing whatever, um, you know, when we're getting to know God like that, talking with Him on a daily basis and just really just have that relationship with Him, He will give us the desires of our heart. And because you know what? The desires of our heart, when we become Christians and we become saved and we are born again, children of earth, and we're saved, you know, and uh, the desires of our heart become different. Even though we might screw and send up sin, like Paul says, the desires of our heart are now, you know, to be good and to, to do this and to help this person and to want to do this.